Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I don't know why I'm punching. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit more different than usual. First of all, I'm talking. Yeah, in case you didn't know, I can talk, I don't just dance. But yeah, I'm going to be doing a story time video. The reason why I decided to do a story time video out of the blue is because I recently had an article written about me on a website called Dream Nation. I'll put it in the description below. It was a short article on my career journey, my university journey, and it's quite a lot to fit into a short article so I decided to make a video so I can get more into the nitty gritty bits that we couldn't really talk about because it would have gone on for ages so I'll try not to talk for ages. So if you like the sound of that stick around and let's go. So from the age of about I think I'd say 10 maybe? I always wanted to be an accountant and everybody would always say to me are you sure you want to go into account? And I'd be like, yep, yep, yep. I was really stubborn. Right up until, I think it was May the 10th, I think. So it was in May. I applied to universities. I got into Aston, Manchester. I was going to do finance. And it was like the last, last minute in May. And I was having a conversation with my sister on the phone. And she was like, you know, you're really into videoing. Are you sure this is the career path you want to go into? And so after that conversation, I, kept, I left it thinking, Okay, yeah, I'm gonna see this through. Let's see what I can do within media because I guess that's where my passion lies. So like I said, this is May. I'm meant to be going to university in September. I had got into university, so I was like, okay, I wanna go. Not for good. I was like, I'll take a gap year, get some experience, get into a university that offers a media-based course. Bearing in mind, I'd never studied anything to do with media, had no experience, but I was like, I'm gonna get in. <laughs> so I shared this revelation, I don't know why I keep doing this. So I shared this uh, revelation with my parents and I don't know if I could say they were excited. Um, <laughs> you know, gap year is what you could say unheard of within our family. Nobody had ever taken a gap year, they were like, Why would you take a gap year? You finish school, you go to university, like, that's how it works. And I think this was the first time of them seeing me being really passionate about something and really putting my foot down, like, no, this is what I want to do, this is what's going to happen. So I had their blessing and I felt like that in itself was more drive for me to be like, you know what, I need to make this happen, I need to make it work. As well as the fact that I actually wanted it to happen and work. <laughs> so now I'm on my gap year, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? So I ended up entering a contest for the MOBOs and it was put on by, it was for the MOBOs, but it was by Labara Mobile, or they were working together. The MOBOs anyways, yeah. So you had to make a video saying why you wanted to win. And if you won, you got to go to the MOBOs as VIP, go backstage, meet everybody. Great, great, great. And what really drew me to this competition, which my mum told me about, if I don't say that, she might kill me. No, I'm joking. It was the fact that if you won, you got to work with a music video director that went by the name of Luke Biggins. And I looked at him and I was like, oh my God, he's worked with so many people. He's like, wow. <laughs> so instead of just saying why I wanted to win, because a lot of people entered and they were like, you know, I want to be jealous, I love this person, I want to see this, 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 this. And other people were like uploading their show reels and I was like, oh my God, their work is amazing. They actually had DSLR cameras and at the time I had like a small little di digital camera, are they called? I don't know. Yeah, but it took pictures and just so happened to do videos. It was something like this. I entered with that and I just contacted different people and I was like to them, can you help me, can you be in this video? So I recreated three music videos, I entered it, I won, um, I went to the MOBA Awards with one of my best friends, her name is Ruth, hey Ruth. <laughs> it was like a movie, literally we walked the red carpet, I say we walked, we literally ran down it, they were like um, fans screaming and in my head I'm thinking okay yeah they're waiting for the celebrities to get out of the car let's not waste their time let's just run <laughs> down this red carpet there was people at the end of the carpet taking pictures of us and in my head I'm like oh my god why are you taking a picture of me we literally just beeline straight for the door in our heads we kind of thought that maybe we would like you know, strip down <laughs> 
But in reality, it was just phew. <laughs> we met JLS. One of them said to me I had a really nice smile. I mean, if they say it, it's got to be true, right? <laughs> Like I said, the whole night it was like a movie. I did really enjoy it, but I was so much more excited to get to start to work with the music video director. I worked with him, I learned so much from him. I helped on music videos for um, Tinchy Strider, Jodie Connor, McLean, DJ Ironic. It was originally meant to be just helping on one music video, but he, you know, he'd keep inviting me back and I'd get to be on all different music video sets and see how music videos really work. Because initially that was the main field that I wanted to go into. I I also went in for advice, I was like, I want to get a camera, what sort of camera should I get, what is within my budget, but you know, it will still look amazing. <laughs> so he advised me to get the Canon 550D, and here it is, um, yeah, it's still, it still works. And with this camera I started filming videos to finally build up a portfolio so I could get into uni. I'd recreate music videos to songs that I'd heard of artists and I had a vision of what I'd see the music video being like and I had so much fun. I met people that I had I'd never met in my life, didn't know them but just you know found them on Facebook on um what's that site? On Star Now, um yeah and just got in contact with them and said hey do you wanna be Jesse J? Hey do you wanna be Beyonce? And off the back of that I started contacting artists managers and being like, hey, I want to do behind the scenes, what's up, let me know. <laughs> Not in so many words. But yeah, and I got my sister to help me draft it because she's a lot better with English and probably speaking <laughs> than me. You know, I was emailing people daily. It wasn't just, you know, the first email I sent and they were like, yeah, come, come through, come and do this video. So yeah, I was contacting a lot of different people daily and eventually I heard back and off the back of that I got to, you know, film behind the scenes from people from X Factor like Bellamy. I got to work with artists that had been on Britain's Got Talent. I got to work with Lucy and Laverskell. So yeah, I got to really build up my portfolio and I really enjoyed behind the scenes, filming it, editing it, getting to go to all these fun places. Yes, yeah, so I built up a portfolio and I got into uni. Oh yeah, I was really excited about that. Initially I wanted to be a music video director, but there's no course for music video directing. So I had to do um, film and video production, but I thought, you know, it's pretty similar. A music video is like a short film, it'll all be good. So I went to uni, I started my course, and I didn't like it. <laughs> a lot of it was very theory based, a lot of it was film driven and I'm not into film at all. Like everybody there wanted to go into the film industry, I didn't. But I was like you know let me you know try and see this through, maybe we can mix things up a bit. By mix things up I mean so we'd have certain project set where we'd have to create a blog and speak on I've forgotten like everything from you <laughs> but yeah so we'd have to speak on that and I'd ask could I make it a bit more about music videos but still do everything you're asking us to do but just look into music videos instead of looking into film because I'm the kind of person I need to be enjoying what I'm doing for me to actually go out there and want to do it and want to do it to the best of my ability but it was a straight no. <laughs> and I heard that a lot. Kid, I didn't know. How about if I... No. It, no. And then I, it got to the point where I just stopped asking. In second year, I was still doing my own video work outside of university. I got to go on tour with a group and that was something I had always wanted to do and film behind the scenes of their tour. That was pretty fun. That was like a check off my bucket list. Checklist. Bucket. List. Check. Okay. <laughs> I came back to uni, I caught up with my work, I did okay in second year, not amazing, and then I was like, you know what, third year, gonna turn this all around. So third year, you do your final year film. This is where it all, all counts. This is what it all comes down to, I don't know why I'm making this sound so dramatic. Yeah, it's your final year film, it's like, it's your final year, <laughs> I would say. So yeah, we had to do our final year film. I think it was during the holidays between the second year and third year or around Easter, I don't know, there was some holiday. There was a film competition running 
and the lecturer was like, you know, there's this film competition, you can get to groups and make production teams and make a film for this. And I was like, meh, not interested. <laughs> like I, said, I didn't really want to get into film, I didn't want to do these contests, I'd rather spend my time doing other things. What I didn't know, I didn't have the inside scoop. Everybody entering this competition, they could take their film and use it as their final year film, didn't get the memo. So the majority of the class, they were already in their groups for their final year film. So there was literally just like a handful of people left that weren't interested in getting involved in anything outside of the class. And <laughs> I didn't really want to group myself with them. I didn't want to leave the responsibility of my end of year grade in their hands. So I was like, do you know what? I don't need a team, I can do this on my own. I spoke to my lecturers, I was like, is that possible? And they said yes. I decided I was going to do a documentary following three people. My nephew who plays football, a choreographer and a music video director slash producer who's worked with like Enrique Iglesias and stuff. So I was doing the documentary on them. I was like, do you know what, I'm going to go to my lecturers, I'm going to get as much advice as I can to make sure I can make this work. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, they gave me advice. I was gonna make it into one documentary. They said, split it into three different documentaries and only enter one to be graded and to be played at the end of year degree show. I was like, you sure I shouldn't just put them all together? They said, no, only use one. I said, okay, I'm trusting you because I wanna get a good grade. So I did what they said. After that, they said to me, it's lacking you should have put them all together and because of that my film got pulled out of the end of year degree show looking back on it now i'm like mm, whatever but at the time i was distraught i felt like that was the final straw having constantly hearing no you can't do this no don't do that no this no that and then the film that i do i was really proud of it a lot of people said it was some of my best work by far and i felt so too and to have it pulled out of the end of year degree show where your parents come and watch your end of year film we rent out a cinema and they're like nah get out <laughs> that cut pretty deep i was really upset about that i cried i don't know i'm really i'm just like i guess i'm just really happy right now but it was a very very sad time and on top of that we had a module where we had to set our career plan i set mine and i said after uni i'd get an internship through the internship i'd meet a director he'd become a mentor to me after the internship stay working with the director learn a lot from him help on various shoots after that get my first job within the media industry and learn from that experience and while this is all going on setting up my own production company and that was my plan i mean not as simply put as that there was you know it was written out a lot better. <laughs> that was the plan and yeah, I was told it was too wishy-washy of a plan, too many maybes, nothing certain. Basically saying that wasn't a legit plan for when you finish university. Uh, okay. <laughs> I feel like that's one of the problems with creative subjects. How can you truly mark and judge someone's creativity? An art form. What one person may see as good, the other person may not. So when you're studying, a creative subject you have to kind of tailor it sometimes to the people that are going to be marking it so you're making work that would please them more so than it would please yourself i don't know call me stubborn or whatever but i was just trying to put out what pleased me and i mean it didn't do me any favors i didn't <laughs> because i didn't do too well at uni but i'm not sad because i got through it so that was my uni experience and so at that stage i had reached an all-time low you know i did that in one of my final modules my end of year film being pulled out of the show and then while i was making the documentary i got to speak with the director he gave me a lot of good advice things that i didn't really know much about the industry so initially I wanted to be a music video director and he said it to me straight like there isn't that much money in music videos anymore there's very few directors that can truly earn a living off being a music video director you know your director exes Emil Nava you know those guys a lot of other directors are still living at home because what they're making isn't enough to get by on after that conversation I was happy that I knew but at the same time I was thinking okay all I knew 
to this point was my tunnel vision was going towards being a music video director so now what? What's next? What am I going to do? Because I didn't want to be in the position where I resented being a music video director I never wanted to lose my passion for it and I could see that happening if I leave university and I'm trying to pursue becoming a music video director you know pitching just not getting anywhere and not making much money I'd lose that love and excitement I had for it so in my head I thought okay I'll still do it as a hobby but now what am I going to do and I wasn't leaning towards going into anything media based because of what was currently going on in my course I was very much thinking what else can I do now so I went to go and see my careers advisor I say this was faith God the universe everything just all come into play I sat down with this careers advisor he was about maybe in his 30s just an English guy I forgot his name what was his name was it Sure. So I sat down with him and I was like, yeah, um, wanna change careers? What you got for me? <laughs> he asked me a bit more about myself, so I was telling him about my background. It just so happened that he was into music videos and music video directors like Director X, Hype Williams, like my favourite directors, he actually knew about them and so many people that aren't into that side of things don't really know. And that's why I feel like it was faith, the universe, God, everybody just sent him to me for me to see him that day and he just looked at me and he said why give up now you've come so far look at all you've accomplished and it was simple words but that's what i needed to hear at that time i remember i got really emotional i was like don't cry he doesn't know you like that <laughs> i think he could say i got a bit teary-eyed i guess for three years of hearing no you can't do this don't do that and just slowly but surely my spirit being crushed it was just those few words and i was like yeah i can do this i'm gonna prove them wrong I'm gonna get this internship. I'm gonna go into the career path of media. How? What am I gonna do? I don't know what to do. And that's when he suggested to me a portfolio career. So he knew that I enjoyed video editing, directing, dancing, teaching dance, and I wanted to help people. And he said, you can do bits of everything, and that's what they call a portfolio career. And I was like, hmm, interesting, John or Steve. I forgot his name. So I left that meeting just feeling excited about my future and just re-energised and I was like, yeah, I can do this man. What? <laughs> After that I was constantly applying for internships and I managed to get an internship with a company called Lutie Media. They've done music videos for, you know, Drake, Hotline Bling, <laughs> Iggy Azalea, Fancy, Justin Bieber, so many. So yeah, I managed to get the internship. I was really excited. So I moved back to London and started my internship and I was really excited. But at the same time, it was still weighing heavy on my heart because I didn't do well in uni. My grades weren't too good. I didn't get the grades I'd have wanted to get. Even though I had this amazing internship, that was still kind of weighing on my mind. But I remember I spoke with Eric White. He directed, you know, Lottery Ticket, with Bow Wow and Ice Cube. He also directed B2K's music video aha uh -huh. he also directed jojo get out leave <laughs> chris brown run it but yeah he's done a lot so yeah i'm friends with him on facebook i don't remember how i think i just randomly added him once and asked him for some advice or something but here's a tip um whatever career path it is that you want to go into go out and seek people that are successful in that field and just get in contact with them you never know they may actually get back in contact with you, give you some great tips and advice and yeah I tend to go to him every now and then for advice on things or I'll show him a video and say what do you think, what could I do better? So I got in contact with him and I was like yeah that was it, that was a conversation. <laughs> so I got in contact with him and I was like was I like or did I really say it? So I got in contact with him and just explained the situation to him. I've got this internship, I'm excited about it, but I did really badly in uni, is that going to affect my career and he and he said the industry we're in it's all about your work and you know you've just got to show up and be the best you can be high chance they're not going to ask you about your grades don't fret about that for now focus on your work and your craft and you'll be fine it was what i needed to hear to just give me that little bit more boost of confidence this is my favorite part if we rewind back to what my lecturer said to me when i told him my plan in terms of my career too wishy-washy of a plan too many maybes nothing certain basically saying that wasn't a legit plan yeah he said it was too wishy-washy it wasn't gonna work well after uni 
I got an internship with Looty Media. During my internship, there's a group called Union J, and I was helping on their music video for their song. <laughs> yes, I got to help with the casting process, help on set, got to work with Director X, it was great. But I saw a director on set of that shoot, got speaking with him, after that we exchanged contacts, and off the back of that, after my internship, I was working with him. I got to do behind the scenes for Tinashe, Shawn Mendes, it was great, I had a lot of fun and learned a lot from him. So I remember what he said? I couldn't do, I did. Got the internship, worked with a director after. I got a job in the media industry after having worked with the director. So my plan seems to be going well so far. <laughs> Although in the middle of working with the director and getting my job I have today, there was two months I'd say where I was looking for work. I was still working in a restaurant part time, but you know, applying for different jobs, applying online. Didn't get any of them, but I think it's because this job was what was meant for me. Yeah, for two months I was just applying. I was feeling a bit low, you know. You know when you finished university, my internship was over, I worked with the director, had somewhat slowed down a bit more, and you're thinking, okay, I went to university, I studied such and such, and I'm working in a restaurant. For some people, that may be where they're happy with staying, no judgment, but for me personally, I didn't initially want to work in a restaurant, so I didn't want to stay working as a waitress. So I was, you know, every day I'd go to work, it was a bit like, mm, is this what it's going to be? I was pretty upset. I think a few more months it may have, I could have gone, cl been close to reaching depression maybe. And then one day, me and my mum were at home and she was like, oh, I'm going to Elton, do you want to come? I was like, yeah, I'll come to Lidl because I think I'm going to get some avocados. So I was just in Lidl, chilling, cruising. and. I bumped into an old friend from primary school and she was telling me how her brother was looking for somebody that had just come out of university looking to get into editing to come and get involved in this company and in my head I thought ah oh, yeah for sure like I would not turn down an opportunity but in my head I thought they want someone from uni I, I just I don't know I just assumed it was a small startup company so we exchanged numbers and said yeah um, I'll pass on your email and so I went home, I was really excited about it. You know, I was like, oh, yay, potential job. Woohoo, I'm gonna quit tomorrow. But I did, I went in for my shift. <laughs> I think it was a week or two later, we arranged for a meeting slash interview. And I went there, I was like pretty chilled about it. I was like, you know, I got this interview, light work, it's gonna be all good. So I showed up for the interview. We were talking, right at the end, he said the name of the company to me, and he said, yeah, so the company's called. I was like, I've never heard of it. So I was like, okay, I'll go home, look them up, blah, 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 blah. But the interview went great. Um, he seemed impressed with me. I guess I came across well. So I went home, looked up the company. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I thought it was such a small company, but they're big. It was big. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I don't think I would have applied for the job had I seen it online. I would have thought, I'm not ready for something of this magnitude. So. I saw it, I did get a bit scared, but I said, what's the worst that can happen? And then, basically I got the job. And when I first heard the pay, I was like, you know when you hear about the pay of a job and you're like, whoa, but you have to play it cool, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And so I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I think it was two days before I was due to start at this job. The date had finally been set in stone of when I'd be starting this job. And I don't know, I guess now that it was final, I freaked out. It was like, I think I had an anxiety attack. I was on the train and I just, every time I was thinking about it, I, just, I wanted to cry. I was scared, like I was happy. I was like, yeah, I've got a job. But I was really scared, like genuinely, I was ready to cry. And so I called my other best friend, Martha. Hey. <laughs> because I realised there was a lot that I hadn't let out yet and I needed to let it out in order for me to be able to move on to this next step. So not doing well in uni, fear of failing.
give myself time to process how I actually felt about it. And even at my graduation, I can't say I really enjoyed it that much. Like, you know, I posted the pictures like, oh yeah, look at me, cap and gown, walking across the stage, fun times. And my family were there with me, they were really happy, supportive, like, oh yeah, you're graduating. In my head I'm thinking, why are you excited? Why are we celebrating this? Like, deep down, that's how I felt. I didn't truly enjoy even my graduation. So yeah, back to the conversation with Martha. I just cried it out, expressed like my fears. Yeah, I was scared. I knew that this was the turning point for me to truly get back to who I was. And I was scared, but I was determined to prove it to myself that I could do this. So that helped, I felt emotionally cleansed. And yeah, I was ready to start at this job. And I've been working here now for a year. I'm really enjoying it, I've learned so much. My editing has improved a lot. The pay is great. <laughs> and yeah, I'm really happy. I feel like I've got my confidence back. I'd say 80% back. And by confidence, I mean confidence in me and my work and what I do. It's taken every time I've been working on an edit to be like, yeah, you did that. Yeah, that fade looks good. That colour correction's on fleet. <laughs> I just have to big myself up for every little thing to just be like, do you know what? Yes, you are good. And that's helping me get back to where I was. Because before, when I was, you know, entering the MOBO competitions, I had that blind, fearless confidence. And I want to get that back. I'm nearly there, 80% of the way. That final 20% is coming this year. I'm going to get to it. So, yeah, that is my story on how I got to where I am today in my career, university experience, and some career advice tips in there if you could decipher them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I think I may do a few more of these talking videos and hopefully that will help improve my talking. <laughs> I hope, um, even if only three people watch this, I hope you guys can take something from this, help someone out there that may be going through the same thing that I went through. So yeah, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Let me know about your university experience or if you experienced anything similar to this. Yeah, I look forward to reading the comments, even if it's just one from my sister. Please comment. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. And I don't know how to end it now, so I'm just gonna go. Go. Tap, roll, hey, tap, roll, come on, tap, roll, tap, roll. Now your hands, just go like that. Whatever your hands want to do, as long as they're here, it just make it look like you're using your hands to push your hips.